go ahead and we'll begin with our funny and Sony Commission meeting. We'd like to thank you all for coming. The time now is about 4 o'clock, maybe a minute after. And we have our agenda before us. Our first item on the agenda is the approval of the June 2nd, 2015 agenda, which is today. I move approval of the June 2nd agenda as presented. Second. Okay, okay. it's been moved by Jerry and seconded that we approve today's agenda for June 2nd, 2015. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, the agenda is accepted. The second order is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held last month on May 5th, 2015. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Steve and seconded that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting that was held on May 5th, 2015. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, the minutes are approved as read. Okay, the third item is we will receive and place on file the financial report for April of 2015 um, staff report. This is Anderson with staff. This is the uh, budget performance report through the end of April, which puts us at 75% of the year. Um, as you can see, uh, the first page there, first two pages is revenue. Um, we are uh, at 91% in a couple of places and where we should be at 75%, 81%. We just had uh, council approve a sale of property for $28,000 uh, last night, so that'll put us over 100% for that um, full item area. Um, going back to, uh, so we're looking good for revenue for the budget. Uh, moving into the expenses, we're pretty much right on track. Um, we have some personnel uh, line items that we've changed based on uh, part-time versus uh, full-time for the economic development position that Don Meyer works part-time for us now. Um, so otherwise, we're right on track there as well. Okay, any questions or discussion? I just was wondering, it shows 90% of the salary budget. Is that right? Are you on page three there? Yes, three or 14. Um, yeah, down at the bottom, that's the economic development part. So we, we kind of changed how we were going to code some of that for that's, that's not the, the main salary. That is the economic development salary. So a portion of my uh, pay comes out of economic development line items and the portion comes out of planning. Actually, another portion comes out of CD, out of Waterloo Housing. Okay. It really makes my timesheet fun. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're, we're actually fine there, you know, it's at 90% because we're going to recode some of that to different sections. Um, Again, that most of that is Don Tmeyer at part-time position. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Okay, we will receive and place on file the financial report for April 2015. Here, next item on the agenda is oral presentations. This is an opportunity to present any item that is not currently on today's agenda. If you have an item that's not on today's agenda, we ask you to come to the podium. Please state your name and address. Okay, hearing none, we will move on to new business. Okay, our first one is going to be a hearing. It's a request by, and forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Guillermo and Roxanne Galvez to rezone 3.62 acres from A1 Agricultural District to R1 and 2 Family Residence District for the purpose of constructing one new single family home generally located north of 2533 Burton Avenue. In your agenda, it will be on starting on page one. And at this time, we should receive in place on file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee stating I. Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter and aerial photos were mailed to each individual on the attached list by regular mail on May 21st, 2015. And can we have a motion to receive and place this notice on file? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Tavis and seconded that we receive and place this notice on file. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, the notice is accepted. Staff report. This is Graham with staff. Uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone the 3.62 acre property uh, that is currently zoned A1 Agricultural District uh, to R1 1 and 2 Family Residence District. 
uh, in order to construct a new single family home on the property. Uh, impact on surrounding uh, the neighborhood and surrounding land use. The request could have a negative impact on the surrounding area and surrounding land uses due to its proximity to industrial uses in the immediate area and is also shown on the future land use map as industrial. Uh, there is a home located immediately to the south of this property. However, it has been there since 1900. Uh, there's also a home located to the east on property that was rezoned to R1 back in 2001 to allow the home. However, staff was opposed to that request at the time. Um, the property has been, this property has been zoned A1 since adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Uh, surrounding land uses to the north, uh, you have vacant land and some industrial uses zoned M1, light industrial district. Uh, to, the, to the south, you have that one existing house zoned A1. And then you do have uh, a neighborhood further to the south zoned R2, one and two family residence district. Uh, to the east, you have that an existing house zoned R1 and then also existing industrial uses zoned M1. And to the west, there is a vacant development ground zoned A1 agricultural and M2 heavy industrial district. Uh, there is no sanitary sewer nearby to the serve this site, so the property would need to install a septic system if the rezoning is approved. Uh, there is a 12-inch uh, water main that does stop uh, at the north end of this property, uh, which is indicated they could uh, connect to water if uh, this rezone is approved. Uh, the future land use map does designate this area as industrial. Uh, the rezone request would not be in conformance with the future land use map uh, designation for this area. Uh, the applicant's proposing to rezone the property to purchase, uh, purchase it from the existing owner to construct a new home on the property. Uh, it's 3.62 acres in size. Uh, it basically has trees on it, uh, and some of the area is in agricultural production. Uh, the property is owned A1 agricultural district, and the rezoned R1 is required for the uh, new dwelling construction. Uh, the property is located along Burton Avenue, which is between West Airline Highway to the north and Lucas Street to the south. Uh, the area generally located to the north, west, and east are mainly zoned either agriculturally or industrially, uh, while the general area to the south is zoned residentially. Uh, the property directly to the east at 2540 Burton Avenue uh, was rezoned by the City Council from M2P Plan Industrial District to R1 1 and 2 Family Residence District uh, back in 2001 in order to allow for the construction of a new house. However, staff was opposed to the request at that time. Uh, the future land use map, which is a part of the City of Waterloo Comprehensive Plan, does show this property as industrial, as well as the properties to the south, west, and to the north. Uh, the land located directly to the east and further to the south within the existing residential subdivision uh, is shown as low density residential. Uh, based on the map, this request would not appear to be in conformance with the future land use map for this area as it is anticipated that this area would develop with industrial uses. Uh, therefore, staff is recommending that the request to rezone this property from A1 Agricultural District to R1 1 and 2 Family Residence District uh, be denied for the following reasons. Uh, number one, the request would not be in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map, which designates the site as industrial, and the request to construct a new residence in close proximity to industrial uses would not appear to be the best and highest and best use of the land. Any questions for staff? Thank you, Shane. Before I begin, I'd like to read. Um, if you have an agenda in front of you, general rules for the public participation. I just want to read rules three, five, and six, because um, over the past year, we've had some very um, emotional issues come up because it is dealing with property. I mean, this is your land. Many of you, you own real estate and property and homes. So I just kind of want to go over that. So as we move forward this afternoon, we can do it in a um, hopefully a very amiable and agreeable way. Number three says, interested citizens may speak one time per item. Please limit your comments to approximately five minutes. Although generally discouraged at the discretion of the chair, interested citizens may be allowed to speak more uh, once per item. And sometimes if we need clarification, we may ask for that. Um, it's just in the matter of respect of time, because in the past we've had kind of bantering going back and forth. We want to be respectful of your time for the commission's time, because we do need to keep a quorum. So I just want to point out, if we can have you speak once, um, share your comments, because we do want to hear them. They are important. Number five is keep comments germane and refrain from personal and pertinent or slanderous remarks or repetitive information. And six is all comments and requests for information shall be directed towards the chair and not towards individuals in the audience. All comments shall be in keeping with proper and courteous conduct. 
So when it reduces the chair, um, although I'm the chair, it's for the commission because it's you're bringing it before us. So we just want to point that out because it's been um, a little heated at times, and we don't want that to be the case here. So if you can think about what you're going to present and just be respectful of the time, we do want to hear from you because it is important, and we do consider that. So with that. I'd like to open up, if there's anyone for or against this request, we ask you to come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the commission in the audience. Hi there, good afternoon. My name is Roxanne. Unfortunately, my husband's out working out of town, so he was unable to be here today. Um, what can I say? <laughs> We have a family, five children, age in, range, ages from two to 19, and we would like to build our dream home. Any consideration is greatly appreciated. I'm Fred Meehy. Uh, I reside at 4566 Whispering Pines in Cedar Falls. Uh, I'm a real estate broker and I represent Mr. and Mrs. David Good, who are the owners of the property. Thanks for your time today. I know it's uh, uh, busy. I know you all have busy schedules and you take time to review this information. It's all important. And I appreciate the planners, uh, the work that they put together to make their recommendation and, and really research this property. Uh, we have uh, been on a track to sell this property for Mr. and Mrs. Good for several years. And uh, it seems like if you look at the pictures, that looks like an absolutely beautiful spot to build a home. Uh, there's so much uh, developed industrial ground around Waterloo that is available, that has all the city services. There are a lot of choices there. I'm real familiar with the process and, and understand that the land use map would, would indicate this would be industrial property. And, uh, and it would make sense with POS there immediately north. But the reality of it is we have uh, endeavored to try and find uh, users, industrial type users, and haven't found anybody. Uh, and we have had no, uh, numerous parties that have been interested in building a home there. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Galvez uh, have decided that this is where they want to move their family of five and I'm kind of excited for her. You can see she's a little emotional here and, and uh, I suggested that she get up and introduce herself so people can see that uh, we've got somebody that's a real person that really wants to, to add to the community here. Uh, I'm going to just read quickly from our City of Waterloo goals. Uh, goal number three is to facilitate and promote the development of housing options to meet the needs of current and future Waterloo citizens. And I know, working with uh, Noel Anderson and the group, that you know we want to see new houses in Waterloo. And uh, we can go out along San Martin, we can go out south of San Martin, and, and there's a need for housing in Waterloo. And uh, this is, uh, this is going to fill a need in a small area, and it's going to provide some tax revenue for the city when they get done with their with their plan there. But with that as a backdrop, um, I like to say that historically this neighborhood uh, has been active when uh, met with uh, zoning changes in the past. I think uh, two years ago, uh, Ms. Tackett and, and Dustin and uh, uh, a couple other members were here when Mr. and Mrs. Good uh, had a uh, site that was being uh, uh, up for uh, getting a special permit use for uh, a uh, uh, use on the property just immediately to the west. And, and uh, the city uh, uh, planners approved that plan and recommended that, but when we got in front of the planning and zoning, the, the uh, outcry from the community uh, uh, was met with a, a resounding denial from the, from the commissioners. And uh, the neighbors were happy that they were heard and, and uh, so they've got, they've got an active uh, uh, interest in seeing what's going to happen there. So I would say that this will be something that will be represented, will, will be well received by the neighbors. If you look at the uses there, uh, you've got a residence immediately across the street, a, a residence immediately south. And the rest of the property, you've got light industrial north, um, and then we've got uh, agricultural and uh, 
uh, heavy industrial to the west. Uh, but uh, really all the adjoining ground, uh, north and west, is vacant. Uh, it's all natural there. So I think it's a real, it's a nice fit. If you uh, have, that's just some, uh, some supplemental information. There's three sets here. I didn't know how many commissioners would be here, but there, uh, there's 20 to 30 foot towering trees along the uh, borders of this property. It creates a real nice screen from the, from the building site to the uh, adjacent properties. It's a lovely spot to build a home, and, and it, it has natural screening there, and that, that's gonna be an asset. Um, and um, uh, uh, I guess I'd say in conclusion that uh, the Galvezes are well uh, aware of what uh, the property zoning is, what the land use, intended use is, and uh, they'd like to build their home there. They're fully informed of what's going on, and, uh, and uh, I'd urge you to consider um, allowing this zoning to move forward. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Don Sullivan. I live at 2533 Burton Avenue, the land immediately south of this area. Um, I've taught in the Waterloo schools, uh, private schools, for 40 years. Um, I've lived out there for 35 years. Um, at one time, in the northeast corner of this property, there was a house. Um, it was torn down a number of years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm here to support their uh, request. Um, I've raised two of my children out there and basically four of my grandkids. Um, my six-year-old was just out there yesterday, and it's an absolute wonderful place for kids. Um, you can get out and enjoy the woods. You can just have a good time. Um, Mr. Carter across the street has a residential house there. Um, the land around me, north and west, has been basically agricultural land since I've lived there for 35 years. They've been, in fact, they just planted it yesterday. Um, there's a little creek that runs through the west end of the property. That's the groundwater that's pumped out from the... Uh, business is north of us and it flows through the land and enters the field west of us. It's about three feet wide and about five inches deep. I'm perfectly good crystal clear water. Another great place for kids to get an experience in the woods. So I'm here to support the request. I think it's a great idea for that area to this be rezoned to um, residential use. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Ms. May, I have a question. Um, when you mentioned about there was not um, that many people that have been looking at that property for industrial use, um, I guess when I'm, as I'm considering a vote, um, I appreciate that you want to build a home out there, and it sounds like it's a real good place as far as the neighbors. But I also hear that they want to, it's zoned for industrial. You said that there hasn't been that many um, people interested in building out there. Do you? I'm just wondering why, is there a reason, is there, could that change? And my only concern is if you build a house out there, will that deter from property values down the road should you decide to sell? Or I'm just kind of wondering how that would reflect as a homeowner if that starts getting built up or do you foresee it being slow? I mean, that's a lot I'm asking, but I'm just trying to get an idea of the dynamics of that area. Well, you know, the, it's been pretty stable out there. There haven't been a lot of changes. Uh, the most development, uh, uh, there's been very little industrial development out in that area, and I think they're pretty well, f pretty well full. Um, I don't think that there are any other lots available. We have, uh, um, we have uh, presented this property and marketed it towards industrial type users because that's what we know as the, uh, the, the city's uh, um, intended use. Uh, but we just, uh, over mo several years, we just haven't been able to find anybody with any industrial use that wanted to go out there. Um, it isn't fully uh, served. There is no city sewer there. The sewer stops up at uh, Daniel Street, about 300 uh, or, or 400 feet north of here. There's water directly in front. So for somebody to want to develop this lot for an industrial use, uh, they're going to have to bring sewer down as well, uh, and so it'd be it'd be costly to do that. There's just a lot of choices. I mean, we're in real good condition here in Waterloo with a lot of industrial site choices, and uh, 
Now, frankly, the, the strongest interest we've had have been for people who wanted to build their homes there. So I've been out there at uh, t 20 below zero weather with uh, uh, families that look at, it, look at it and decide, oh, this would be a great place to build. And I'm thinking, could you think a little bit quicker? It's chilly <laughs> out here. But, but, you know, truth, you know, honestly or, or uh, um, seriously, uh, we've had, the interest we've had has been limited. And we've uh, marketed it far and wide. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's kind of run its course. And Mr. and Mrs. Good would, like, would, good would like to sell the property. They bought it with the intention of uh, building a home out there and having a small business use with it. Uh, so they're going to kind of uh, bridge the gap with two uses. But uh, uh, ultimately, they, they purchased other housing years ago. And, and uh, it's just taken this long for us to get uh, Mr. and Mrs. Galvez uh, uh, ready to step up. Does that answer your question sufficiently? It does. It does. I appreciate it does. Thank you. Do you need a motion to close the hearing? I'd make a motion to uh, to close the hearing at this time. Second. Okay, so we move by Davis and second. They will close the hearing. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. Okay, I would turn it back now to the commission for your discussion or motion. So I have a question. This is Thornsbury. Um, in 2001, the city council decided that it would be appropriate to have the people across Burton build their home. And so am I correct in assuming a precedence has already been established for that area? That's one for staff. And the second one is the future land map is not really sealed in concrete. It, it changes all the time. In fact, the very next object or subject we're going to deal with is with the the school area, and it's it's being advised to amend the future land map. So I don't think hanging our heads on the um, the fact that this is already zoned as industrial is that relevant, frankly, because when you look at what's out mm -hmm. there, it very easily could be another residence and not um, impact. The future development. If it is a residence, we would get taxes from the property owner when they build their new home. So, what about that comment about uh, 2001 setting a precedence? This is Anderson with staff, and of course, we take each rezoning request separately. Um, we have to follow what the policies of the zoning ordinance say, what the future land use map says, regardless of what the council action is, unless we were to amend the future land use map. Mm -hmm. So our recommendations are based on those. Um, you know, and when this, the future land use map was last amended, um, I think back in about 2000 or somewhere around there, 2003, mm -hmm. this was a difficult area, as you re may recall, for the commission. Um, it was a matter of where do you put the yellow, where do you put the purple on the map um, for the industrial versus the residential, and and there is a mix out there. Um, one of the you know the, the, I guess the factors that we looked at when we were when we were looking at this new request was a number of things. Number one, um, directly to the west or southwest of this site, the city does have uh, a number of acres now um, that we bought for potential probably twofold. One, you may recall, that was where they wanted to put a recycling site um, for, for rock, rock crushing and all that. Um, that was a stick for construction. The city traded them land in the Northeast Industrial Park, which is a heavy industrial area, because of opposition from the neighbors. Um, we also have some drainage needs in that particular area, so buying that land or swapping that land at the time we thought would help serve those drainage needs. Plus, it does give some options about you know, currently um, on your map, you can see Longfellow and Cloverdale at the bottom left are both streets that just dead end <coughs> into that land. Obviously, for fire protection purposes, they don't like dead end streets like that. They like cul-de-sacs where they can turn the fire truck around. Um, you normally like connectivity between streets. So we, with the city owning the land, there's a potential for, you know, do you bring that street up and around and connect it and put cul-de-sacs with some more houses and have the north half for industrial? So there's some flexibility in the area. At the same time, the city could develop it for industrial, light industrial type lots that would not create the excessive noise and dust and all that that was con the concern of the rock crushing. Um, 
To the north, we do have, of this site, we do have Omega Cabinets, one of our largest employers in Waterloo. Um, so we're always uh, cognizant of that. That brings along with it heavy noise. And, and I know that they talked about the applicants are aware of what's going on out there. As more industry may want to, that maybe does business with Omega, would want to build out there. Or um, Daniel Drive is shown on your map. That was actually a rise road um, from the early 90s that was built. So there's a number of lots on the south side of that for industrial development. Um, so there's some more industrial potential out there. Um, those are factors that we looked at. Um, one of the other things with the idea of the, the sewer not being extended, um, anytime you have these breaks or gaps in the systems, it can cause problems elsewhere. Sewers are a little bit more independent of each other. It's not like a water main where you need to have a loop. Um, obviously, if it was developed industrially, the city would normally extend the sewer to the site as part of the industrial development agreement. Um, and we will not have that with the proposed development either. So that, those are all factors that we looked at in our recommendation. Thank you. This is Morrison. I'd like to point out for maybe members of the commission who aren't as familiar with this area, if you went just south on Burton, um, beyond where the picture is, there's a lot of residential. There's a lot of houses. This is right before it spaces off and there's a stretch before it becomes industrial. So there's a lot of housing, even though the house all by itself looks like it's all by itself, there's a lot more mm -hmm. further south. Um, and if you guys are okay with it, I just have one question I'd like to ask the applicant, um, if you're okay with that. I have one question for you. Um, have you visited the site during different hours of the day? The reason I'm asking is at the south portion of Burton, there's a sign that says no semi-traffic, but I know that the semis completely ignore that and semis go up and down that road all day long. So as long as you've seen it, you know, five o'clock, six o'clock, and you realize that during farming season, there'll be semis running 24 seven, I wanna make sure, I know that the realtor said your eyes wide open. I just wanna hear it from you that you really know what's in your neighborhood. And if you're okay with that, Ma'am, could you come to the mic? Sorry. <coughs> yeah, we're, we're aware of that. We've been out there um, looking at it. We have gone several different times. I haven't had any, seen any semis, um, but even if they were, I wouldn't see a problem with it, with them going down there. But um, yeah, we're well, well aware of that. Um, we do have tall trees and we're kind of just looking at the, we looked at both sides of it. We. My children looked at it too, and they're like, "Mom, did you, you know, do you realize that they're over there?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Does it bother you?" They're like, "Well, no, not really. You know, there's that parking lot up there, um, and you know, we kind of took it seriously, and that's why we submitted the application because we were open to everything that would be considered." All right. Thank you. Any other discussion from the commission? If not, I would ask if we can have a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the request. Second. It's moved with Mike Davis and seconded that we approve the request for rezoning. to rezone it from A1 to R112 family residence. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Okay, I'd like to have a roll call vote for this. A yes would mean approval for the request, and a no would be a denial. Thornsbury? Yes. Paul? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Buckles? Yes. Tackett? Yes. Passes. Six nothing. So this is a recommendation um, from the Planning Commission. It will go to the City Council and probably it has to be set for a data hearing, so it's probably about three weeks out at the City Council. Um, staff will be in contact with you. The time now is 4.30. The next item on the agenda is the request by Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity for a site plan amendment to the R1RP Plan 1 and 2 Family Residence District to allow for the construction of 14 new single-family homes located at the former Irving Elementary School at the corner of Hawthorne Avenue and West 6th Street. And that begins near Pagan on page 9. At this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification 
signed by Patty McGee stating, I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, photos, site plan, and aerial photos were mailed to each individual on the attached list by regular mail on May 21st, 2015. Do we have a motion to receive and place this notice on file? So moved. So okay. okay. It's been moved by Flynn. Flynn and seconded that we have received and placed this notice on file. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. Motion passes. Staff report. This is Miller with staff. The applicant is requesting to construct 14 new single family houses on the former Irving Elementary School at the corner of Hawthorne Avenue and West 6th Street. The request to construct the new single family houses would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. It would appear that the, pur that the proposed houses and their proposed designs would blend in well with the surrounding neighborhood. The area in question is zoned R1RP, planned residence district, and has been zoned as such, since April 4th, 2011, all surrounding properties are zoned R2, um, one and two family residence district. <coughs> as noted, the applicant is requesting to construct 14 single family homes located along Hawthorne Avenue and West 6th Street, Eureka Street and Western Avenue. The planned residence district is a site plan specific and changes to the site plan must be approved through the site plan amendment process as either a major or minor amendment. There are multiple styles of houses being proposed for the site, ranging from ranch style bungalows along with two story dwellings. Each dwelling is shown with an attached garage or detached garage large enough to accommodate at least one vehicle. Um, the track of land is approximately 3.5 acres in size and the lots range from sizes 8,959 square feet to 13,999 square feet. And there is also a tract A that is shown adjacent to lot one that is 1,867.6 square feet in size and will be conveyed to the adjacent existing residents for access. The site plan shows a 15 foot utility drainage easement along um, the street frontage of all lots. The front yard and rear yard setbacks are shown as 30 foot for all lots. Um, lots one through three, six through 11 in the south lot line or the south lot line of lots four and five show a side yard setback is 6.5 feet. The north lot lines of lots four and five show a 20 foot side yard setback. Lots 12 through 14 show a side yard setback of eight feet with the east street side yard setback showing 20 feet. Um, no site plan was approved at the time of the rezone in April of 2011. Therefore, Habitat for Humanity is before you today submitting a site plan for the area. The site plan submitted shows the typical home layout with garages in, for this area. Minor changes to the layouts include detached garages shall be considered as part of the site plan submitted today. Um, therefore, staff recommends that the request for a site plan amendment in the R1RP plan residence district be approved for the following reasons. The request is located within the primary growth area according to the City of Waterloo Comprehensive Plan and can be served by, existing, by extension of existing utilities. The proposed use would not appear to have a negative impact on the area and would be compatible to existing development in the area. And the proposed development with, is within density requirements set forth in the zoning area, zoning ordinance for the city of Waterloo. Uh, subject to the following conditions that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, included but not limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, et cetera, and that sidewalk is properly installed along all frontages of all developed lots, including corner lots. Questions for staff? This is Sorens Bear, a question. The, um, I'm not sure I understand the sentence that, or the paragraph that starts with no site plan was approved about the detached garages. So okay. did the first plan was with detached garages and now they're attaching the single car garage? Um, initially back into April of 2011, there was no site plan submitted with that, um, with the area. Now Habitat is actually coming forth with a site plan. Um, the site plan that they included actually does have attached garages with it. Um, we are actually including, or in their deed of dedication, they are stating that detached garages are also allowed on those properties. So um, with the site plan approval process to with before you today, we're planning um, or considering those detached garages as part of the site plan as submitted, if that. 
clears that up. Hopefully. So when back in 2003, when the when the area was rezoned, when you rezone to a, a planned residence district, you can rezone it to an RP with the site plan to come later, or you can rezone it at that time with the site plan. At the time, the the city was was rezoning multiple sites. They just the council just rezoned them all RP, knowing that plans would come later. So in that new um, proposed change to the code, single car garages are okay. In today's world, most people, most residents have two cars. We're gonna create a whole new subdivision with single car garages and a potential to it for a detached garage as well. The current ordinance does not require any garages. Correct. So we think this is a step in the right direction to help create more garage space with designs. Um, a lot of, uh, of existing or older neighborhoods with lots, it's harder to fit double garages on mm -hmm. unless they're detached garages sitting back behind where they kind of curve behind the house a right. little bit or something. Um, so we're, we wrote the ordinance, the new proposed ordinance would allow for single garages as well. Okay. Um, part of our intent there was that, that would give some storage space for things other than just vehicles, depending upon how big the garage was in terms of that single garage even. Um, but then you'd still have driveway space to park another car out front. Thank you. I had a question regarding um, as far as the drainage and sewer and all that's okay with the Baltimore addition just being basically you know, two blocks to the other direction and all of those houses being built or actually being sold, lotted out to sell the houses in the old Baltimore field. This would not create any sewer or water issues with these two developments that close. Eric, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Eric Forrest, Senior. The sanitary sewers in that area are sized adequately for sanitary flows, so that shouldn't be an issue. And um, they have to have a stormwater management plan, which will come along um, as part of the process as they develop there if this is approved. Okay. Thank you. Okay, at this time, if anyone from the audience would like to come forward to speak for or against this request, we'd ask you to come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the audience and the commission. Hi, I'm Allie Parrish. I'm the director at Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity, located at 803 West 5th Street in Waterloo. Um, I just am here mostly to answer any questions that you have and, um, of course, to, to give our support for the project. We're very excited about the possibility. I've done a lot of work to um, take a look at our house designs, to fit our lot sizes, to fit what, uh, what is around it, um, and just be a good neighbor and a good addition to the, to the existing area. So love to answer any questions anybody has. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else from the audience? I'm Steve Sastren from 4123 East Park Road in Cedar Falls. I'm the current board chair for Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity. Um, I had the opportunity a number of years ago to come and speak on this same project to the City Council uh, when we were proposing habitat uh, single-story homes. I wanted to make sure that the Planning and Zoning com Committee knows, and you've seen pictures in your, in your documents, that since that time we've decided that, that we really want to make sure that we're really a good partner here in the community, not only to allow families that are in need to be able to have homes, but else also help with uh, some of the tax burden the city has, to be able to be able to give back to the city with some of the, the taxes that will be uh, generated from these uh, facilities or from these uh, houses. The issue that I want to bring up is that we plan on, on putting single family homes, no rentals. It'll be a really good, strong neighborhood with people that want to live there, be there, uh, keep the neighborhood up and we will plan on putting multiple styled homes in there versus what we had proposed in the past. So we think it'll be a great addition to that whole neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? 
Yep, now I've heard back. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. My name is Hank Wellnitz, live at 400 Clare Street, Cedar Falls. Um, we've talked a lot about the, the houses that will go there. I want to talk a little bit about the people that will live there. I've been involved with Habitat for Humanity for 26 years now, and I've worked on approximately 87 habitat homes, all the way from Calgary, Canada to uh, Kentucky, and about 65 homes in the Waterloo area. And over that period of time, I've got to know the people that live in those homes and how the trajectory of their lives has changed by having stable, uh, decent, affordable housing that they have worked hard for with sweat equity that they continue to pay on their mortgage. I would be happy to have any one of those people that I've worked with over 26 years be my neighbor. And I think it will be a tremendous addition to Waterloo uh, to move this project forward. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to also oh, chime in. Thanks, sir. I just need your name and yeah. your address for the audience. You bet. Questions. Abraham L. Funches, Jr., 218 Clay Street, Waterloo, Iowa. Um, I just wanted to um, also chime in and, and acknowledge um, that this is the very kind of project, quite frankly, that um, should be celebrated because it's very consistent with a lot of the human rights objectives all over the nation when it comes to affirmatively furthering fair housing in terms of encouraging uh, this kind of development uh, in different parts of the community uh, that you don't normally see sometimes. And because of all the things that have already been mentioned here, uh, this is something that Waterloo should celebrate. Anyone else from the audience? Okay, if not, I turn it back over to the commission um, for a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, it's moved by Steve and seconded that we close the hearing. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes, hearing is cleared, and I would turn it over for any final thoughts and or a motion. Uh, yeah, a motion. Ms. Buckles, um, that neighborhood is very near and dear to me. I grew up there, um, went to Irving School when it was still standing. Um, it's a beautiful neighborhood. It's very, well, back then it wasn't as diverse as it is now, but it's a great neighborhood for kids to grow up in, a safe neighborhood. I don't think it's deteriorated at all. and. Uh, I'm happy to hear that somebody's going in there and finally doing something. This is Morrison. I just want to say 14 hours is how exciting. Mm -hmm. I do like to have a for a project. My father always said anything worth having is worth working for. And I think if we can give that mm -hmm. dream to some families and continue to bring what we're doing in the city, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Samson with staff, just before you vote to it, I just want to. Uh, to thank the uh, Waterloo Community Schools for working with mm -hmm. the City of Waterloo on this. We've, we've worked with them through their, uh, I forget what they, they called it, their property analysis or something um, of all the school properties. And, and I think they've really been a great partner to the City of Waterloo and, and, and the citizens there to try and create new neighborhood vitality in some of these older school locations too. And I would like to say on behalf of the schools, these kids will just can walk to their elementary down at the new Irving, as you would call it, and um, so it's a great location for that. And I too grew up and went to Irving, and in fact, I drove by this morning and I thought that lot looks bare. So I, when you know, it would be really exciting if this gets going mm -hmm. and see families back playing on the ball field around there. So, mm -hmm. I would make a motion uh, mm -hmm. to approve the request uh, with the conditions noted. Second. So we move my Tavis and second that we approve the motion to the request by Harlan Habitat Remedy to um, do the site plan amendment for the R1 RP plan one two family residence district to allow for the construction of the 14 new single family homes located at the former Irving Elementary School. Okay, is there any final discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. And the motion passes. 
The time now is 4.45. Our next item on the agenda is a plat and with everyone's permission, we will combine the plats. This will be in your packet is B1 and 2. The plats are the request by the Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity for the 14 lot preliminary plat of Irving Square Edition, located at the former Irving Elementary School at the corner of Hawthorne Avenue and West 6th Street. And also a request by the Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity for the 14 lot final plat of Irving Square Edition, located at the former Irving Elementary School at the corner of Hawthorne Avenue and West 6th Street. So we're asking to combine both the preliminary and the final plat of the Irving Square Edition, and those begin on page 19. At this time, we should receive them. No, we don't need to do that. So, <coughs> staff report. This is Miller of a staff. Um, as stated, the applicant is requesting the preliminary and final plat 3.526 acres into 14 lots for development for single family homes. Um, the tract of land that the 14 family, single family residents will be um, constructed upon is located on the former Irving Elementary School site. And existing sidewalks are shown along the northeast and west property lines on the plats. Um, proposed sidewalks are shown along the southerly property line. And average, the average size of the property is directly adjacent to the site in question are approximately 9,900 square feet. Um, the plat shows lots that are approximately the same size uh, as the surrounding lots, if not larger. The applicant has submitted multiple home designs that appear to be matching existing homes in the area. Preliminary plats must show property lines, building setbacks, current and proposed utility lines, um, street information, contours, and vegetation location. The submitted preliminary plat does contain all of the above information, but the plat does not include the proposed topography contours or street light locations, which are required with submissions of the preliminary plat proposals. Um, for final plats, the submission of a final plat must include the property lines, building lines, adjoining subdivisions, deed of dedication, um, engineer certificate of survey, easements, right away with, and all w are included with the final plat also. Therefore, staff is recommending that the request for the preliminary and final plat of Irving Square Edition be approved for the following reasons. The request is located within the primary growth area according to the City of Waterloo Comprehensive Plan and can be served by existing extension of existing utilities in the area. The proposed use would not appear to have a negative impact on the area and is compatible to existing development in the area. And the proposed development is within the density requirements set forth in the zoning ordinance. Subject to the following conditions that sidewalks are properly installed along the front edge frontages of all developed lots, including corner lots, and then an updated final plat is submitted to city staff before going before city council. Just had one question. So that um, subject is the final plat is submitted to the city council? Yes. Okay. Um, there were a few minor things that staff would like to see changed on the final plats and preliminary plats before um, we can submit those to city council and we have relayed those on to the applicant and the engineer and those are being done as far as I think I know so um, we just added that as a condition before they can go before city council okay mm -hmm. That's good. Any questions for staff <coughs> Uh, at this time, does anyone would like to speak for or against this? We ask you to come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the audience and the commission. If not, I would turn it back to the commission for final thoughts and or a motion. I'd make a motion uh, to approve the, uh, let me look here. The uh, preliminary and, and final plat uh, with the conditions noted. Second. Okay, so we want to in second that we approve the preliminary and final plat of the Irving Square edition um, with the conditions stated um, by the staff. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. Okay, the time now is 4.50. We're moving on to Section C, Special Permits. 
Our first one is a request by Leonardo and Irene Cadernes for a special permit to allow for a hobby farm located in the R2 1 and 2 family residence district located at 526 Quincy Street and it's on page 34. Staff report. Okay, this is Graham with staff. Uh, the applicant is requesting a special permit uh, to allow for a hobby farm on the property that would allow them to keep up to 12 chickens on a lot that's 0.39 acres in size. Uh, staff is concerned that having up to 12 chickens on this property could have a negative impact in the area given the smaller size of the lot. The chickens would be located between an existing detached garage and a shed away from property lines. Uh, the surrounding land uses are mainly residential in uh, nature. Um, the applicants are requesting a special permit for the chickens. The applicant uh, actually mentions roosters in the application. Uh, however, roosters are not allowed in the city, so the property would only be allowed to have hens if the hobby farm request is approved. Uh, the applicants have indicated that the chickens would be housed in a 12 by 6 foot chicken coop located between an existing 576 square foot garage and a 100 square foot shed to the southwest of the house. Um, the applicants have noted that the pen will be six foot in height and would have a wood cover on the top. Uh, the request would not appear to have uh, a negative impact on the, the surrounding area as the coop would be located, uh, appears to be about a minimum 100 foot from the nearest houses uh, as there are multiple lots owned by the surrounding property owners. Also the applicant does, uh, did submit a petition of approval signed by several of the surrounding property owners including the property owner directly to the south who would appear to be the most affected by this request. Uh, staff is somewhat concerned by the number of chickens based on the smaller lot size. Um, it is slightly larger than a typical size residential lot. Uh, there have been two recent requests for hobby farms in the city. The first located at 3031 East Charlotte's Road. Uh, that was approved to have up to 24 chickens. However, that lot was 4.7 acres in size. Uh, the other property at 258 Kenilworth Road was denied to have up to five chickens. And that was on a lot that was 0.22 acres in size. Uh, staff understands that there is a petition of approval from s several surrounding property owners uh, and that the total lot size of the property is slightly larger than a typical residential lot. Uh, so staff would be uh, suggesting that the property be allowed for, uh, to allow up to eight chickens. Um, we did, uh, I handed out to you a letter uh, that was from a surrounding property owner. Uh, I emailed it to you yesterday and also provided a paper copy so you had a chance to read it ahead of time of uh, someone that was concerned, a uh, neighbor that was concerned about this request. And we also did get a phone call, I believe from an Aaron Thomas. This was, this person was, um, did receive a notice in the mail, uh, a notice to property owners and they called and were uh, voiced opposition to the request as well. Um, staff is recommending approval for the special permit to allow up to eight chickens. Uh, based on the fact that the hobby farm would not appear uh, to have a negative impact on the surrounding area with the reduction of the number of chickens. And the applicant has indicated that the chickens would be housed in a coop located between an existing garage and a shed away from property lines. Uh, and, and subject to the following conditions, one, that the hobby farm be limited to a maximum of eight hens with no roosters, and two, that the chickens be contained within the fenced-in area in the location shown on the applicant's site plan. Any questions for staff? I have a basic question, and that is, who checks if they have eight or nine or ten hens? You know, what what is the the checking on this to make sure that they're in compliance? And if they have ten, who removes the hens? This is Anderson with staff. Um, generally, it would be probably complaint driven. Um, if, if they, it was thought that they had more, um, code enforcement officers would be um, empowered to enforce the zoning ordinance and would go out and look at the case. And our code enforcement is pretty backed up at this point, and we want to send them out looking for numbers of chickens? If they get complaints on them, they would have to, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I believe that's how this property was found out about code enforcement. Mm -hmm. and I had a question um, from staff. We approved, was it five chickens for a home on Prospect for a hobby farm? Isn't that further? We denied. Oh, we denied no, that. No, okay. That that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want to talk Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff? I'm curious as to why H was chosen. Why? 
one. How do you how do you come to the number of chickens? That's always a good question. Um, <laughs> we've been doing some research on that based on the increasing number of hobby farm yeah. requests, um, and we we found different uh, communities with different regulations. Um, I, I believe eight was one that we found for the size of, of parcel that they have was pretty common in a number of multiple different ordinances in terms of the amount of chickens um, that they allowed. And, and they range, um, you know, some of them are very close to others, others are way off on one side or the other. Um, there was one particular ordinance, I think it was out near San Diego, California, that allowed two chickens regardless of the size of your lot. Others had a per acre or per distance that the coop is from the property line to other property lines, um, numbers and all that. So um, we, we tried to kind of pick the middle of all the ordinances we could find at this point since we don't have one specific to the numbers. Okay. And this is currently in existence is what I'm hearing. The, the chickens are there. They are currently there. So has there been any problems noted of kids walking by there or vandalism because Cunningham School is pretty close to that location? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else information we had from code enforcement. Okay. Yeah, I would turn this over to the audience. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against this request, we would ask that you would come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the audience and the commission. Excuse me. Aaron Morgan and the post office box 1164, Wallet of Iowa. And I, when the property owner is in this vicinity where they're having these chicken, and he's saying having a problem with court enforcement here on the amount of chickens, I've got the solution. I'm going to be against having those chickens here in this area. And uh, this area is a redevelopment area. They just build new houses in there, see? And there's a house there that's just been put in a couple of years on that's adjoining here. And this is something here that is not wanted. And these chickens are going to be housed, you say, in a garage. And then there's going to be summertime, you know. There's no way to clean those garages. And it's going to be smelled. And there's going to be flies, you know, that we're going to have. And I am against it for that purpose. And, and among a few others there. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else at the audience that would like to speak for or against this request? If not, I'll turn it back to the commission for some thoughts. I have a question regarding code enforcement. Um, were this to be approved, and as the gentleman said, um, there were an issue with smell and upkeep and that sort of thing, is there a remedy? Um, can this be revoked? Can this be sort of what is the process if they don't hold up to their end of the bargain? Eric, do you want to talk about the annual review Eric Schrader city planner I'm trying to find the section here in the ordinance that we put in hobby farms are item number 26 under the list of special um, um, special permit uses in the special provisions, exceptions, and modifications section of the ordinance. And towards the end of that section, it talks about um, an approved hobby farm shall require an annual license issued, issued by planning staff. The license shall be valid from July 1 to the following June 30th. Every hobby farm shall be inspected prior to issuance of a license. Failure of a hobby farm to comply with the requirements for a hobby farm or any requirements or conditions placed on the special permit approval for a hobby farm shall result in the license being denied. Any hobby farm denied a license shall be subject to review by the Board of Adjustment to determine if the special permit shall be revoked. No hobby farm or farm animals shall be kept. Uh, the rest are getting into different regulations. So that's the part that talks about revoking a license and revoking the special permit. Thank you. I did research um, in response to the letter that we received with concerns about property value, uh, amongst others. I could not find any real data 
that said that hobby farms affect property values. I, I, I understand um, that it's some folks like them, some folks don't. Um, but I don't know that it's the role of the commission to sort of start to walk that line. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the regulations in the first place uh, because I do think that hobby farms have a place even within city limits, uh, whether it be chickens or otherwise. Um, the only thing that I could find um, that, that really dealt with property values uh, was that Forbes uh, top 10 cities over the past t five years between eight and 10 of the top 10 cities in fact allow um, hobby farms, either backyard chickens or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so there doesn't seem to be the negative impact on property value, which is addressed in the letter. Uh, I really did take that seriously because I understand that that's folks' investment. Um, but the evidence doesn't play out. And so um, I, I, with there being an annual review process to make sure that if these are bad players, um, you know, neighbors do have a, re a recourse. Um, I'm planning on supporting uh, staff's recommendation with those conditions of limiting it to eight ends. Mrs. Thornsbury, I have an, a question re, uh, regarding this annual review. So the city has an ordinance that says you will do the annual review of the license and all. How's your performance been on that? Mrs. Schrader with staff. Um, that entire provision was placed in the ordinance when the zoning ordinance was um, redone in 2011. We have not had a lot of hobby farm uh, requests come through since enactment of that. There have been a couple. That has been something that we have not really worked out yet, the whole licensing and annual inspection process. So thus far our track record hasn't been great, but it, it's really kind of, I mean, I know it was 2011, several years ago, but it, it's, it's not that long ago and we haven't had very many requests yet. So it is something that we kind of need to get the process worked out and make sure we're doing that properly. So the couple you've had, have they had reviews? No. Yeah, I think we had two that were over a year. And so they'll be scheduled soon? Yes. Uh -huh. And would those come back here after review? Only if there were issues that we thought they were in violation with their approvals that therefore suggested that their license should be denied and the special permit recommended for being revoked. And even at that point, it would go to Board of Adjustment. Uh, right? That's true. It actually is written into the ordinance. That way it goes straight to the Board of Adjustment. So if they were to reapply, they would have to come back if they were denied, reapply. Correct. Yeah. So in this case, um, I heard you say that the, the, the window of the license is July 1, June 30th. How do we handle this particular incident? It's June 2nd. So is it, will they get their license for the coming year? Yeah. Or do yeah. they have it just till June 30th? The, the intent would be if you approved it, the Board of Adjustment will be at the end of the month, so it will probably be within days of July 1. We would just move it to July 1. Great. On this incident, it kind of works out. What about others that are in December? What, what is your process for that? For then they would have to get a new one in July 1. Okay. And what is the fee for that? There has not been there a fee not. established. Okay. But I don't there know. will be a fee. Council would have to take action to establish a fee. I, and uh, there hasn't been any discussion of establishing a okay. fee. It, it hmm. may need to be discussion if it becomes a cumbersome well, if you're going to send code enforcement out there at least yearly, you know, I think you would at least want something to cover the costs of that. Yeah. This they, is, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Thornsbury here. And they seem to be getting more and more popular. I mean, in just mm -hmm. in, in two and a few short months, actually, that we've ruled on. So, I don't know, it's just something that, it's a process that needs to get fired up, in my opinion. Yeah. This is tack. I. When I moved from Southern California, so, and you're familiar with San Diego, I personally like the two chicken limit. 
I came here, I loved my chickens. I, I wanted to have chickens. I, we rented a farm on the west side of the state, loved them. Started with 30, ended up with six, because um, coyotes get hungry. So we lost <laughs> a lot of chickens, but we were on five acres, and we had down to six chickens. I just think if we're starting to get some precedence, I, I don't know, chickens, little guineas go this big, I had a Rock Island Red, she was huge. So I'm thinking when you're talking about chickens, you're talking about a large variety of sizes of birds. And if you allow a hobby farm in one area, then how do we decide, well, you can have it there because you're closer to the agricultural side of town, but you can't bring that into town. I feel like if we're gonna set some type of standards, personally, I'm more comfortable with two. I just think if you have two chickens, it's like having rabbits. A lot of people raise rabbits, you know, they're on farms too, and there's little bunnies and there's big bunnies. And I just think we have to kind of look at what kind of precedent we want to set. Because like you said, otherwise we're going to be sending code enforcement. And as much as I personally like chickens, I understand I live in the city now. So if I want to have a lot of, you know, farm animals, then I should start looking into getting some, like we did, rent small acreage. So I guess that's my concern in living with chickens and living in the city. I just think two... Is, is a good number, probably not more than three, because you know you start getting a lot of animals in a small area, they're gonna start to smell. Mm -hmm. and that's just the way that it runs. So that's my concern, is I'm for hobby farms, but I think if we're looking at the number of animals, I just think of the word hobby means a couple here, maybe a llama, a small, I mean, it's like with the goats we're gonna discuss. Are we talking pygmy goats? Are we talking large goats? Are we talking little guineas? Are we talking, you know, and definitely not a rooster because we had a neighbor sneak a rooster in California, and I'm telling you, that whole crowing at sunrise is all Hollywood. That thing crowed all day <laughs> long. I think it was blind or deaf, but it was a nuisance because it was right behind us, and you could not take a nap if you were third shift. So those are my things I'd like to chime in, but I'm okay with two, maybe three, but I think eight is getting a little much for in town. Just my thoughts. This is Morrison. I kind of want to go along with the thread that Thornsbury's brought up. In my short time on the commission, I think this is going on the fourth one. And we've kind of been all over the map about mm -hmm. yes and no. And I typically am swayed by neighbor opposition. And that's how I've historically voted. So I can tell you I'm going to lean that way probably this time again. But because this keeps coming up, I think we really need to refine the process, mm -hmm. put in some conversation with city council about code enforcement fees, because I don't think that this trend is going to be stopping soon. I suspect it's coming more at us. And I really appreciate the research that Tavis put into um, the top 10 cities. Just one other thing, the, one of the handouts that you were handed, page 44 of the zoning ordinance, um, there's a circle part that shows you what we have in the ordinance for horses. Mm -hmm. And so what we will be looking at doing is probably trying to get more specific for different type of animal types moving ahead. How about four-leggeds and two-leggeds? <laughs> <laughs> and probably need to deny some things out of the city entirely. And yeah. so we'll, again, we'll be doing some more research on, again, getting more specific. Because I believe you're exactly correct. We've, we've been all over the board in different situations. I mean, I think the one over off of MLK was a, was a large acreage that had very little um, potential for sewer and water provision, so there'd probably be more, or very little amount of residential development anywhere near it, so we allowed them to have more animals, whereas some of these other more recent ones are in more residentially defined areas that you're gonna have neighbors closer. Even if they're not there now, they may be in the near future. And I agree with uh, Leah. I appreciate, Travis, that you brought that up, because with all due respect, we hear that argument a lot. Property values go down, but I have yet to see actually any evidence, and it does help us when we see, here's what this place had, and here's how the property values went down. So I know that argument, personally, I don't consider it anymore. I hear that all the time, but I appreciate you taking the research, because mm -hmm. then we can see, is there really a direct correlation? Any final discussion before we move to a motion? Okay, if not, I'd like to entertain someone to present a motion either for or against the request. 
I move that we approve the request for to allow a special permit for a hobby farm for up to eight chickens located at 526 Quincy Street and it be approved for the following reasons. It would not appear to have a negative impact and the chicken coop has to be um, housed as described in the application and it would be limited to a maximum of eight hens and they must be contained in a fenced area. No roosters. And no well, that's roosters. already, no roosters. In a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Jerry and seconded that we approve the request for the hobby farm with the conditions that there would be eight chickens, no roosters, and that would be contained in the fence area and the location shown on the applicant's site plan. Is there any final discussion? I'd like to have a roll call vote for this. And a yes vote would be for the request, and a no vote would be against. Hall? Yes. Flynn? No. Morrison? No. Buckles? Yes. Tackett? No. Thornsbury? No. Motion fails. Two. Time is now 5:12. Our second. Oh, and just for everyone in the audience, uh, that was a recommendation. It goes to the Board of Adjustment on the fourth Tuesday of the month for the final say. Oh, you're fine. Okay, our second special permit on the agenda is a request by, and please forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Jose and Rebecca Re Rivera for a special permit to allow for Hobby Farm located in the R2, 1 and 2 Family Resident District, located at 2214 Avon Avenue. That begins on page 43. Staff report. This is Western with staff. Uh, the applicants are requesting a special permit for Hobby Farm that will allow them to keep uh, approximately 12 goats to operate a Hobby Farm on a two-acre parcel within the city limits. It would appear that the request could have a negative impact on the area. The surrounding land is zoned for residential use and allowing a farm could negatively impact the development of the surrounding parcels. Uh, there wouldn't be any impact on um, traffic conditions or pedestrian movements in the area. The site in question is zoned R2, one and two family residence district and has been since the adoption of the ordinance in 1969. Uh, surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north, uh, single family homes uh, zone <coughs> R2, one and two family residence district. To the east, single family home and vacant lot zone R2, one and two family residence district. To the west, single family homes and vacant lots zone R2, one and two family residence district. To the south, uh, vacant two acre parcels zone R2, uh, single family residence district. Uh, the site in question is a two acre lot. There is a mix of existing single family homes and large vacant lots surrounding the property in question. Staff feels that there is a good chance that the vacant lots in the area will be built upon at some point. Um, screening is not required uh, for this request. However, uh, there is a requirement of uh, a five foot fence be utilized for the raising of goats. <coughs> Uh, future land use map designates this area as low density residential. The proposed hobby farm would appear to better fit the characteristics of an agricultural use and not be in conformance with the future land use map. Uh, the applicants are proposing a special permit to allow for the establishment of a hobby farm generally located at 2214 Avon Avenue. The site in question is a two acre parcel where the applicants reside. Their overall area is rural in nature as many of the lots are very large uh, and very wooded. Uh, the area dedicated to the goats is approximately 1.5 acres, which includes a 440 square foot barn built in 1978 and a 240 square foot hay building built in 1950. Uh, staff would have concerns with locating hobby farm that includes 12 goats in the city limits as a future land use map indicates that the proposed area should be used for low density residential. Staff believes that the vacant parcels in the area would appear to have a potential for residential development and allowing a hobby farm in this location could negatively affect development of the surrounding properties. Staff so feels that the proposed farm would better be lo uh, better <coughs> would be better located on an agriculturally zoned location. 
Uh, staff has done some research on other communities, and the city of San Diego seems to be kind of the pioneer for uh, allowing um, agricultural animals within the city limits. Um, their ordinance states that um, uh, no matter the size of the, of the lot, uh, two goats, miniature goats, are allowed per single family household. There were some others that broke it down based on size of the lot. Uh, but majority of the, the community we looked at only allowed the two. Um, and staff has uh, done some thinking on this, and as Noel had pointed out, number four on that copy of the zoning ordinance uh, regarding the horses. Uh, it would appear um, that that would probably be a good way of deciding how many goats could be allowed uh, per site. Uh, with a site that's 1.5 acres dedicated to the goats, um, that would allow, using the horse ratio, that would allow approximately six, horse, uh, six goats. Uh, therefore, uh, staff recommends that the request for a special permit to allow a hobby farm generally located at 2214 Avon Avenue be denied for the following reasons. The proposed hobby farm would not be in conformance with the future land use map. The proposed hobby farm could impact future development of the surrounding properties. Uh, the request for 12 goats is considered to be too many for this location due to concerns of odor. And I'll ask, actually, and I'm pretty certain that there was actually more than 12. I think there's about 14 goats and two sheep. So it's a little more than what we originally thought. Oh. And the, uh, the next door neighbors are present, and you have the letter from them. Um, so if you want to talk with them, they're here. Thank you. Questions for staff? And I believe the property owner is here as well. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, I would ask if you would like to speak for or against this request. Will you come to the podium, please? Please state your name and address for the commission and for the audience as well. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Westfall. I live at 2232 Avon Avenue. My wife Michelle and I own the adjacent 1.67 acres just to the north of uh, the proposed hobby farm. Our house sits approximately 120 feet uh, away from uh, where the animals are currently housed and fed. Uh, we have um, had instances where the goats have got, gotten out and gotten, gotten into our yard and eating our plants and shrubs. Uh, there have been instances where the goats have been trapped in the fence and we've made contact with the neighbors to uh, alleviate this. Uh, it's happened uh, three or four times. Uh, <clears throat> initially, when the owner moved there, uh, she started out with one goat, and this goat uh, ended up <clears throat> being given to the neighbors or whatever. And then uh, there was an issue with some, some uh, horses that were boarded there or whatever. They ended up in our backyard. And now we have approximately seven goats, or excuse me, 17 goats and two sheep residing over there. And uh, the most significant issue over there is our quality of life. And that is affected by the smell of the manure, the urine, and also the flies over there. The second issue is our well water. Uh, according to some of the information you may already have in your packet, it, uh, there's some information from, from Iowa State University and also the Code of Iowa that mem uh, <coughs> recommends a minimum lateral distance from the confinement area of these animals to be 200 feet. The approximate uh, distance now is 120 feet. Uh, our well is a shallow well, which would <coughs> require this minimum distance of 200 feet. Uh, our quality of life has suffered in <coughs> Uh, because we are unable to entertain guests, we are unable to have our families over and grill out, we are unable to hang our laundry out on the line, we are unable to open the windows and enjoy the fresh air. It uh, is very detrimental to our neighborhood. Uh, <clears throat> 
the commission members uh, brought up the fact that uh, of property values. I don't have an issue with property values, but I do have an issue of being able to market the property should that uh, arise. Uh, I think that uh, we are probably going to be the most harsh neighbors because <clears throat> this uh, confinement area is right next to our property. Uh, I applaud them for trying to build a fence and uh, conceal some of the, the area over there, but that doesn't help the smell or the flies and it doesn't help our groundwater. A few months ago, um, <clears throat> we were up here because of the zoning request of a junkyard off an airline highway and you people voted unanimously to protect our quality of life and our well water. And I would uh, appreciate if you would do the same consideration now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak for or against this request? My name is Rebecca Rivera, and I have signatures from all of the other neighbors in our neighborhood. And I know you know Michelle Labrick. They both worked for the city. I have not, and I want to make a correction, the horse that was, in fact, in the yard was our elderly neighbor's, neighbor's horse that, in fact, is deceased now that I helped get out of their yard. We all get along very well, and everybody in, I don't know if you guys want this, um, but everybody in the neighborhood has agreed that that is the reason why we moved out there. Their house, in fact, is situated, I don't know how it was approved, but it's very, very close to our lot line. At one point, I think this is more of a personal issue than what it was presented as. They wanted me to sell a parcel of my land because their house is, so is very, very close to our lot line. And this is years ago and I didn't want to split up the land. I have two and a quarter, about two and a quarter acres. We do have more goats now than ever before because they're having babies. We did take some in from a um, petting zoo over by Rhinebeck and they were pregnant and we knew they were pregnant. We, get, we usually get them in the spring, get rid of them in the fall. It takes, if you think about horses, they graze all day, they're grazers. Goats eat a little bit and that's, they eat a little bit, eat a little bit. It's a little bit different. I grew up with horses and animals. My kids help bird these goats. Um, all of my neighbors, everybody else, you can get the signatures, have agreed that it is, they have absolutely no problem with it. They, in fact, asked if they could borrow some of them to eat their weeds down, which is what we use them for. Um, I'm not here to cause any kind of problem, just my family, my house. I've lived there 14 years. We've always had animals. Uh, I'm a fairly young mother. I have children that I'm trying to raise in a natural way. They're involved in the animals. They help bird the animals. And we just enjoy being outside. And in fact, the new neighbors across the street is a very young family and they were told, which I understand, I don't understand all of how things are coded necessarily. I was told when we initially moved there that we were allowed to have the animals. And you guys, I think it was a Jeffrey with the zoning. He's no longer there, I was told. But he said that there's no problem with my animals, that we were grandfathered in, which I know in 2011 when you, um, something happened where we have felt an application now. And we did. I, I'm young, I don't understand it all. I don't come to city meetings. I do apologize. I work, go home, take care of my children. So does my husband. My neighbor across the street is planning on having animals, so I'm just really hoping, and everybody else in my neighborhood, and I'm hoping personal matters doesn't affect our lifestyle and our lives there. And I just don't want personal problems to be affected to be brought in and be affecting other situations. And I'm nervous, sorry. No, I just got off work. And we're all volunteers too, so we're, mm -hmm. you're in good company, but we do go through research and we go through our topics. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for this What are you planning on doing with 17 goats? I mean, I don't, really, I don't think we have 17, to be honest. I'll have to go out and count. We do have a couple sheep that are leaving, um, but some of them are babies, and once they're weaned, they're being taken back to the Waverly Sale Barn, 
We get them in the spring usually and get rid of them in the fall. We just have enough to eat up the backyard. This is the most we've ever had because of the babies. They, a lot of them had babies. They're getting weaned and they're getting taken to the sale though. Um, this is, we did have them this last winter, all through the winter, only for the fact that they had babies. And I have to admit, I kind of enjoyed it because my kids got to learn the birthing process. And all my, if you look at the properties, surrounding properties around us, we have horses, we have goats, or we've always had goats in the surrounding houses, um, right next to where the horses were and the gentleman that passed away that had the horse, they had goats always. So I mean, it's been years of this lifestyle and living. Um, we just use them to eat back, eat the grass down low, enjoyment for my kids. I had the one, in fact, that I had first when I first lived there was a family pet that used to sleep on my deck and come in my kitchen and get in my car. And when I went through my separation with my children's father, I am remarried, we've been together over 10 years, but it was a lot for me to handle and I gave him to the neighbor that loved him across the street where he eventually died of old age. Um, it's just trying to have clean living. And I wish, in fact, that you all could come over and see the setup. It's not as closely situated as you guys ha have been informed. I don't know, I wish you could come over and see my house and see the setup and see it back there. There's no flies landing on you and back in the backyard there's absolutely no flies. Mosquitoes, yes. Mosquitoes like crazy, but there are no flies. That not anything more than normal. Um, this is Flynn again, and there's probably 25 signatures here. Where are those? They're a large family. They are directly across the street from me. They're the next to closest uh, apart from Rick and Michelle. And they're the ones that was told, they just bought their home, purchased their home, and they were, they were told that they were able to have families that are, animals there and they were looking forward to it. They have a barn, they have acreage. Their acreage is, I think, pretty comparable to mine. I have two and a quarter and I think theirs is about two and a quarter too. They also purchased the property on Burton that burnt down. She actually was gonna come here today but she's doing gardening and stuff and she has something with water was connected. My kids are over at her house right now playing and it's just a family area and if you have family that comes over I don't want, I mean, it's always been a very loving area. There is a little few problems in our neighborhood that everybody would have, but it's more on a personal level, not anything else. I have a question, just as, and I understand you saying, I think it's great things to be a teacher. I think it's great when children can experience things. I guess as I'm thinking through it, and, and I'd like to hear the commission too, I don't think it's that we're against having those experiences and having that. And I think with a hobby farmer trying to get just a little bit without being a full-fledged farm, mm -hmm. I think the concern is, is because it's in town and as you've heard, we're worried about precedence. Um, and I know 17, that, that's a lot of goats. And they, they make a lot. I, as I said earlier, I'm for a more downsize if we're in town. You know, I could see like maybe a couple of goats. Like you said, they'd be for, you know, just kind of, like seven, eight chickens, that's, it's a lot when you're looking in town, but I realize you are by two acres. It's still, I think what we're trying to find is we want to have some conformity, and there is a difference between two acres and a third of an acre, but on the same instance, when you have a lot of animals, I think what we're trying to find is that balance between you live in, you live in the city limits, and if we start getting too many animals, it might be a better place in a more of an agricultural zone where yeah. they have more room. Does that make sense? So that's yeah. what we're trying to find. And we want to respect because I did live, uh, that was one thing when we did have animals in close proximity, there is that smell. I mean, if you put the salt blocks out there, uh, when you have a lot of animals in a confined area, they do attract flies. And what I, one of the things I heard is, like, wow, you know, when I first came here, that smell was pretty strong for me. And someone else said, well, that's the smell of money. I don't even notice it. Well, I did because it bothered me. So I think everybody's a little different in how they're affected. Um, it just seems like 17 or even 12. Is that a lot of goats? I think we have I, 12 or 13 right yeah. now. And I, I wonder, when you have, you said that you knew they're pregnant, then you knew that the population would get a little bigger. And I'm wondering, we were um, planning would you be comfortable them. with a 
down size, like maybe either yeah. one premium goat or just two goats. I guess we're trying to keep the numbers down so we don't have a full-fledged farm. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it's not a hobby farm anymore. I mean, it's not one mm -hmm. llama, it's not two chickens. Now we've got, it says here, three cows at one time, several goats. I mean, I'm looking at this, and this looks like a full farm from the animals that are coming and going. That's my concern is if we allow, and I'll be honest, I'm not leaning that direction. I think, you know, some downsizing or something, 17, I'm personally not comfortable with. But I'm, I understand what you're saying. I'm all for giving that experience. I just don't know if your location for that many animals would be doable and if maybe it's something to be worked out for a smaller size. I don't know. I think I agree. This is something that it's a can of worms. I don't know if we realize we're opening, but I think Let me I just have a feeling that I just I'm, I'm personally not leaning to approving 17, but I want to tell you why. It's not that I'm not against it. It's the area. It's we're in the city limits, and, and I just we want to be fair to everyone. We might consider to neighbors. We understand you have a lot of room from other neighbors. That's just where I'm coming from, and I'd like to hear from you. Commission members, two thoughts. This is Thornsberry. I'm I'm really concerned about the the issue your neighbors brought up about the well and the water, and the proximity. And we we were provided documentations about what um, manure how it can flow into the groundwater. And is there a, a a way for you to move your animals away from that corner to some other place on your two plus acres? They have, I, I said an acre and a half, and we measured it out. It's probably closer to almost two, or not almost two acres, what was it? 1.75, I believe that's back there. They have the entire backyard, another side to go. The building is over on that side, but it's longer than 150 feet from their house. If you think 100 feet is in between light pole distances, it's in the backyard where they're at but they're grazed and they're through it all day long. And I didn't, we maybe at one point had 17, we do not have 17 right now, and we weren't planning on keeping these. As soon as they were weaned, I was going to get rid of them, and I don't ever plan on having this many again. Um, okay. We've never had this many before. Okay. It so, just was So what number would that the put situation. you down to once the little ones were gone? I'm just curious as to how many are just born. Maybe eight. They're most, half of them are babies and when the babies are weaned we were planning on taking them away or actually i was considering keeping the babies and taking the adults away because it came from a petting zoo but i have a little bit harder of time to my three-year-old tries to pet them and they're not the babies let us touch them more than the adults they're a little bit more later <clears throat> okay so um i heard you say earlier that you'd wean them and then you would take them to Waverly in the fall. So it'd be all summer long you'd no. have that? The babies we're going to wean and take right now. What I said earlier, I'm, I apologize, um, in the spring we used to get them and get rid of them in the fall just to eat the grass. They eat the shrubs, the weeds, the unwanted along the um, lot line. And I do apologize, I'm not, I'm not gonna say my goats have never gotten in their yard. Because they have, we have a problem, not a problem with deer, because it's beautiful, that's why we live out there. We have probably 100 plus turkey that are in our morn, in our yards. I wake up to them every morning and deer, and they jump over our fences, and they were knocking the fences low enough, which they understand because they put up a new fence too to try to keep the deer from their yard because they attack our brand new fruit trees. Everything that we put in, they attack and they eat. But with them jumping over the fence, they were lowering it, lowering it. We put the fence up, so it's over six foot, I believe, right now. And it was after talking to them, my husband talked to them, I keep to myself. I don't talk to anybody a whole lot unless they talk to me first. I'm a very friendly person. I work at a local doctor's office, but I don't talk, I honestly myself have not talked to them a whole lot. My husband did a lot of the talking. And I know Rick was opposed, but Michelle, my husband said that Michelle had told him that as long as it was six, that he was okay, that she was okay with it. The well water, if you would look on studies, it's not that close and it wouldn't seep in at, to where it's at. They're not, the animals aren't located that close to the, where they're at. And it's like little rabbit poop. We have more deer than. 
Okay. I, I would, you know, I would say that that in general, I'm incredibly supportive of, of hobby farms. Um, I think that they're, as you said, they're they're actually an incredibly important piece of education. Um, Twelve is a lot. Twelve is a lot. I don't mind having less. Um, I asked for a suggestion. How many is an appropriate number? When I talk to you, I wish. Okay, how many is an appropriate number? How many are okay? Judging from judging two from what staff never, mentioned, two was two was uh, two. In, you know in accordance with in a residential with the area. Horse. And he, they said that they just weren't sure with that. that's with yeah. a normal sized lot. We have almost two and a half acres. And two would not touch any of the grass. We like them as little lawnmowers. I, I, I under, I, yeah, yes, I, I understand. Uh, we're a John Deere community. Uh, yeah, oh. <laughs> they make lawnmowers. Uh, I think that I think we do run a, a, a risk of <clears throat> setting one. We have to hopefully in, in the very short future. Uh, make some determinations. Um, I'm instinctively, especially after seeing uh, the ISU extension reports, um, about a 200 feet minimum. Um, that there are, there are, I think, legitimate concerns uh, with this location. Um, and while I understand that there may be neighbors that are close um, that are supportive, I can also recognize that there's neighbors here that are not. Um, and with the large number of, of, of animals, um, at a minimum, I would like for us to table. I would, I would, be, in, I would be all right with denial. Um, but at a minimum, I would like for us to table this so that the commission can really, and, and pretty quickly, develop some criteria for what hobby farms actually look like and what actual farms actually look like. Because this sounds like an actual farm to me. Um, and we've had, over the past couple months, a lot of clucking about hobby farms. Um, but it, it's, it's time for us. So I, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's time for us to, to really address the issue because they do have a place, um, but this request of 12 is simply too much for me. No, I have a question. You said you lived there 12 years? 14 years. 14 years? Okay. Have you had goats the whole 14 years? And lots of goats with no problems? No. This is the most goats we've ever had. But we've had multiple, like, I think probably 10 the most. And that's why I don't mind guidance. We don't, we don't work with the city. We don't deal with this every day. I don't mind guidance. If you were to say it needed to be 200 feet away, I can move my fence line. I can use it for more space for my kids. I can use it for anything. I, what mostly we need is guidance. I had six chickens before. My kids loved going and get, getting the chicken eggs. We just. It's always been on this property, the 14 years that I lived there. And I've had you guys out and tell me it was okay. That's the confusing part. I just wish I knew if, you get, if I had guidance, I would have something to follow. But when you're told that it is okay, you guys came and inspected my horse. I had a horse. I adopted her. She was a wild Mustang. I had to have a six foot fence. I wasn't required to ask you guys to come over, but I wanted to know, you, that's where the, I swear, I think his name is Jeffrey came in. He's not in your zoning anymore, the gentleman that left. And he's the one that had said it was okay at the time. And she had to be in six foot fence until we had her tamed down for so long. It was when we adopted her. And I had her for about eight years. And like I said, around the time when I split up with my ex, when we separated, is when I got rid of my animals and I had to take a break because it was just a lot going on for me. But well, and I appreciate your honesty as far as just wanting direction, and I think that as a city we need to be able to do that with, again, establishing rules and criteria that um, will, people know what they can and cannot do. And if we don't have that, I don't know how we can 
say nay or yay if we don't have someone that is not following the rules because we don't have the rules. You I have agree. to pick. We, I'm sorry. Let me um, say it was the least. We want to make sure we get this to a vote. Okay. And I think what I'm hearing, and I agree with, we, we all see guidance. And I know that we, we look like we're all, we're volunteers. And we mm -hmm. work with the planning department. We, we do our very best to make sure that we have an informed decision. And we get their information the best we can. We read through it. We want to listen to your neighbors, because we're all neighbors here in I on Waterloo. And it is important. So we try to take all the information. And I think with the hobby farms, it's just all over the place for us, because we want to be fair. And, and at this point, the guidelines do not seem to be as clear. So what we'd like to do is if we can turn back, I'm hearing some ideas on how we can proceed for the vote. I have a question. And if it's, okay, go ahead. So I have a question for staff. Right now, there is an application fee, correct? $200. Yes. Okay. Uh, recognizing that that is a sizable amount of money for working families, is, is it possible for us to deny this request but instruct planning staff that that 200 they paid for this application, it, basically give us time as a commission to come up with something uh, so that then we can give them some parameters. Is, is that possible? Yes. Yes, it is. In the past, I think we've done the same thing by tabling the motion so that mm -hmm. the money wasn't lost. Okay. And we tabled it for a specified period of time to give us time. And if we table it, does that mean that at this time that would you know, if we can get some of the animals downsized, that would prevent code enforcement until we can get this. I mean, is that yeah. pretty well? What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. So if we uh, table what's code going to enforce? If we can get yeah. 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 Well, yeah, generally code enforcement will stay in action yeah. while it's tabled. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there is no uh, discussion, or is there our rules? We've already had one um, one time through, and I don't need to question. cut you off. But if we can, yeah. we're going to move forward to a vote. So our rules, we've, in all due respect, we've done the one more, and we and actually end up going three and a half hours. I would ask if you make a speedy decision because of the temperature, the warmer months and things yes. like that, mm -hmm. uh, how much longer will we going to have to endure this? Certainly. And, and that's why we want to get this worked out for both of you, so there is a fair so without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and turn it back to the commission. When you for do vote. this, will you give me an idea? Like, so yeah. if see this literature, unless you, you look it up, it, it's not anywhere to be we'll, found in we'll go ahead. We'll Waterloo. Go to give me an idea, how far away, how many in we'll, that area, and we'll, what? We'll go ahead and we'll take care of the vote date, and then I would suggest working with the planning and zoning department. They can give you all that because we're the commission. We don't have the information that the planning zoning has, and they can work with you and see what needs to be done. But we need to turn it over to a vote so Tavis can go and that we can move forward so everyone Keep can walk me. away and hopefully get something worked out. <laughs> so any further ado, any further discussion, or can we any further motion? In the hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. Here. Here. Yeah. Yeah. This is Thornsbury. I move that we deny the application for a special permit for the to allow a hobby farm generally located at 2214 Avon Road um, because it's not in conformance with the future land map and that it could impact the future development of surrounding properties and that 12 or 14 or 17 goats and two sheep and whatever are just too many for this location. Further, that the $200 um, application fee be held in abeyance. And the fifth condition is that the planning staff create a proposed ordinance to define what a hobby farm is or is not. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Jerry and seconded that, I'm gonna do my best, that we deny the request for the hobby farm today that the $200 application be re returned to the applicant and that mm -hmm. the planning mm -hmm. was it wasn't that it, wasn't, no, it was returned it was oh, just it was held, held in advance that the two hundred dollars be held in advance and that the planning and zoning commit department um, work out some ordinance details so that this can be reviewed at a further time for more clarity. Is that close? Okay. Who seconded that? I did. Thank you. Any final discussion? 
Now, what would be the difference of tabling that or denying it? Denying it, from my understanding, means the animals have to go. Removed. Is that correct? That's correct. This I is mean, Schrader with staff, although the Planning Commission does make a recommendation. So with a recommendation of denial, it, the applicant would still have the option of sending it on to the Board of Adjustment, who would you know, have the option of you know, following your recommendation or substituting their own. I don't think that actually answered the question about the animals in the meantime. So animals stay or animals go during the waiting time? Uh, again, this is a recommendation, so yeah. it'll be up to the Board of Adjustment yeah. first. So Board of Adjustment will decide then yeah. the animals get moved or not moved? Yes. Not based on us tabling it or denying it? You tabling it, then it would not go to the Board of Adjustment right away. And the animals would stay while it's on the table. If you guys deny it and the Board of Adjustment denies it, then the animals would have to be removed. I mean, in all due respect, their home was built with this property there that had animals on it, but not this many animals. Is that correct? Or there were no animals there when you built your home? We've been there 30 years and... Rick, could you go to the mic? We've been there 30-plus uh, years. She came after the fact. We've been there, she said she's been there 14 years or whatever. The critters came with her So when you built your the home, there were no animals on that farm? No. Or whatever you call it, not Javi Farm, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So a yes vote is a yes to deny, and a no vote means no. So <laughs> makes sense. So, okay. I would call for a roll call vote. So again, a yes is to deny, and a no is not to deny. Flynn? <laughs> of course. Sorry. <laughs> okay, could you, I'm, I'm confused okay. to what if, you're saying this That's means. okay. If uh, you vote yes, you are saying yes to deny your request, um, hold the $200 in advance and for the ordinance. But like they said, if you vote to deny it, then the animals have to go because there's no, it will not go to the Board of Adjustment. It basically will stop here. But they will, but they will have the $200 held in advance. So if I vote yes, it goes to the Board of Adjustment? Yes. 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 Morrison. So if I say yes, I'm voting to deny. So yes. yes. Buckle. <laughs> yes. Tackett. No. Thornsbury. Yes. Hall. Yes. Passes five to one. Goes to the board of justice for denial. Passes for denial. <laughs> but the animals then. Everything has to go no. right now. No. No. Are no. the animals didn't? No. no. The Board of Adjustment. This is a, this is a recommendation. That we don't. So I can't amend it. Again, this is, a, this is a recommendation. Okay. It's still passed, though. Correct. Okay. So someone just, please tell her what this means. So okay. Go, this is a recommendation that goes. The Board of Adjustment is satisfied with the ultimate. Yep. And the that'll contestants be. Contestants stay until they decide. They can decide either follow your suggestion or they can your suggestion. Yes. Correct. I vote a no because I thought the animals will all have to go. I, I think some animals, if, if there's a way you can work on downsizing the animals and work, give your neighbor. I would strongly encourage that. I have no problem. I just want to. Okay. There's okay. no nothing. Well, if you can do that. To be honest, this is, this is the animals. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, Sandera staff, uh, the request to construct the new kennel building uh, would not appear to have a negative impact upon the surrounding area, as the Humane Society has been at this location since the early 1970s, and the majority of the surrounding area consists of light industrial or heavy industrial uses. The property in question is zoned M1 light industrial district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance. Uh, surrounding land uses include to the north, low density residential, zoned A1, agricultural district. South, light industrial development, zoned M1, light industrial district. East, Cedar Bend Humane Society Pet Cemetery, zoned M1. And to the west, other buildings associated with the Humane Society, zoned M1, light industrial district. Applicant is requesting construct a new kennel building directly to the east of their existing intake building at the Cedar Bend Humane Society, located at 1166 West Airline Highway. A kennel, uh, or excuse me, the property is zoned M1 Light Industrial, which does allow for a kennel after a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, zoning ordinance requires that a kennel obtain a special permit in any zoning district. Overall dimensions of the new building are 48 by 112. However, approximately 2,600 square feet of that area will be used for out an outdoor exercise area. The interior of the building consists of approximately 2,776 square feet where access will be gained to the kennels. Zoning ordinance also requires for a kennel that one parking stall be provided for every 250 feet uh, 250 square feet of gross floor area, excluding the animal exercise areas. Therefore, 12 parking stalls are required for the new building. The site plan shows a total of six parking stalls for the new building, six less than what is required. When the applicant constructed their new adoption center to the west in 2010, a variance was obtained in April 2009 to allow for 14 parking stalls associated with that new building. 11 stalls less than the 25 required. Since approval of that variance, there have been no known parking constraints at this location, and there are approximately 16 parking stalls included with the intake building just to the west of the proposed kennel. In speaking with Humane Society Board Director, they have indicated that they have ran a boarding kennel for approximately one year at a location at 7611 North Union Road, and that traffic to the site is low and comes at different times throughout the day. He also indicated that at the longest, a customer may be there for 15 minutes when dropping off or picking up their pet. Uh, there will be two employees working at the boarding kennel, and they will utilize a new parking lot in front of the new building. If there are parking concerns, the two employees could utilize parking to the west at the intake building. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the request for a special permit to allow for the construction of the 5,376 square foot kennel building at 1166 West Airline <coughs> Highway. For the following reasons, requests would be in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for this area. Uh, the request would not appear to have negative impact upon the area as the Humane Society has been at this location uh, since the 1970s. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian or vehicular traffic conditions in the area. And with the following conditions, that the final site plan meets all city codes, regulations, etc including but not limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, etc., and two, that there be no vegetation plan between the new kennel building and the intake building to the west to allow for clear access for Mid-American Energy to access their equipment. Okay. Questions for staff? Thank you. This is Anderson with staff. Just real quick before you start talking about a little bit more, I think we also would need a condition talking about an approval of a variance as part of the special permit. That just goes to Never mind. <laughs> hey, if there's anyone in the audience who'd like to speak for or against this request, we would ask you to come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the commission and the audience. Okay, seeing none, I turn it back to the commission for either final discussion or a motion. I make a motion that we approve the request with the noted conditions that staff placed. Second. It's been moved by Leah and seconded that we would approve the request for the special permit for the new 5,376 square foot kennel building located at 116 West Airline Highway. Any final discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. 
Motion passes. Okay, our final item on the agenda is in Section D for vacates. There's a request by San Martin Management Limited to vacate 1.064 acres of West San Martin Drive right away, located adjacent to 1111. West San Martin Drive, and that begins on page 60. Staff report. Okay, this request to vacate would not appear to have negative impact upon the surrounding area. Uh, vacating of this right away uh, would allow for the applicant to incorporate the property with the overall site, and the additional parking is needed to coincide with a 76,000 square foot building addition to this location, which will add new jobs. Site in question is zone C2 CZ conditional zoning district and has been zoned as such since June of 1995. Uh, to the north is Sunnyside Country Club, zoned R1. South is existing professional offices, zoned C2 CZ. East is Ainsborough Avenue and existing professional offices, zoned CP plan commercial district. And the west is vacant development ground, zoned C2 CZ conditional zoning district. There is an 8 inch sanitary sewer located within the area uh, to be vacated. Uh, Mid American Energy has a large overhead electrical line as well as an underground electrical line within the area in question. Any water main is located approximately 46 feet to the south of the edge of West San Martin Drive. Uh, therefore, it will be necessary to retain a utility easement over, under, and upon the entire area to be vacated. At the Technical Review Committee, committee meeting, uh, the Water Waterworks, Mid American Energy, and Engineering Department express concerns with the ground being cut into, possibly removing ground cover over the existing utilities. Waterworks and Engineering noted that there shall be a minimum of at least six feet from the top of the water uh, main and sewer pipes to the surface to prevent any conflicts, such as freezing in the winter months. Mid American indicated that at least 42 to 48 inches of cover shall be over their underground electrical utilities, and that an island or similar protection is provided around the utility poles for the overhead electrical line to protect against any vehicular uh, contact or damage, then that no concrete can be poured directly around the utility poles. Uh, the engineer for the applicant has indicated that the existing ground underground utilities, along with existing south along the existing south right-of-way line of West San Martin Drive will have to be lowered or relocated along with the relocation of fire hydrants. Waterworks has indicated that before the, any hydrants are lowered or re relocated, plans will need to be reviewed by them before construction be can begin. Prior to the request being forwarded to the City Council, it will be necessary for the applicant to submit a detailed plan showing the proposed grades of ground above the underground utilities after the parking lot is constructed, uh, meeting the minimums as specified. As noted, the applicant is requesting to vacate about 1.06 acres of city right away uh, along the south side of West San Martin Drive. Uh, the new parking lot they wish to construct there will be 81 stalls to go along with the new expansion at the site. Uh, proposed parking will have will meet the minimum setback of five feet from the north property line. <laughs> Um, there would still be enough right-of-way remaining after the land is vacated to have two eastbound lanes at a left turn lane onto, onto the north, uh, onto Ainsborough Avenue. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the request to vacate uh, with, for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have negative impact upon the area. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian and or traffic conditions within the area and with the following conditions. One, that a utility easement is retained over, under, and upon the entire area to be vacated. Two, prior to the request being forwarded to the City Council, it will be necessary for the applicant to submit a detailed plan showing proposed grades of ground above the underground utilities after the parking lot is constructed, meeting at least six foot of ground cover over the existing sanitary sewer and water main, and at least 42 to 48 inches of ground cover over the underground electrical line. And three, that an island or similar protection is provided around the utility poles for the overhead electrical line to protect against any vehicular contact or damage, that no concrete can be poured directly around or up to the utility poles. Uh, questions for staff? I just have one. I think it's that concern of 
it doesn't sound like the poles are anchored in the ground other than if something like a vertical wind or something should whip up. We just want something to keep the poles and come down. I guess I'm, maybe I'm just over concerned, but I know in Benton they have those winds and is that not really a major concern or? I suppose just, not from our standpoint. Okay. No. This is Thornsbury. As a former telephone employee, they know how to set poles. <laughs> okay, that, that's all I need to know. I'm sure so if I just saw there was no concrete, yeah. I want to make sure they're going to be in the ground. Yeah, they'll set them. This is Flynn. So there will be no access to the parking lot off of San Marnin? Uh, no. The, they will utilize existing access points they have now. To the so park. there's no no on and off San Marnin from their property still. It still brings it back up to Ainsbrook? Yep. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. This is Morrison. I noticed that the offer is a dollar. What's the taxable benefit of this vacate? This is Anderson with staff. This was approved as part of the development agreement with VGM um, for, I believe, the cost of them is about $18 million, um, for their new office building, which is about 70,000 square feet. The increase in taxable value, um, I believe, was was close to was $6.5 million or something like that. Sounds like a bargain. Mm -hmm. just, just as a note, we are following the section of state code 306.23, which has to do with uh, former state right of way and set up normal city right of way, um, which is something that we're doing with the South Sunnyside lots to the west as well now. Any further questions for staff? Okay, if anyone in the audience would like to speak for or against this request, we just ask you to come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the commission and for the audience. Wendell Lupkus with VJ Engineering, 1501 Technology Parkway in Cedar Falls. Um, yeah, this is just a step so that we can go ahead and, and prepare the formal plans. We've worked with uh, the traffic department, the engineering department, and, and uh, actually we've got a uh, variance from the Board of Adjustment for the parking aisle width and the new parking lot in order to get the clearances and that sort of thing. So um, it's just a step in the process. So. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else in the audience? Okay, if not, I'd like to return it back to the commission for either final thoughts, discussion, or motion. I make a motion that we approve the vacate request as noted. Is there a second? Oh, a second. <laughs> I know this. Okay, it's been moved by Leah and seconded that we go ahead and we approve the request um, by San Martin Management to vacate the 1.064 acres of West San Martin Drive right away. Subject to the following Subject to the following staff. conditions. Yeah. Staff, thank you. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Aye. Nay. Did you vote twice? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't know whether to say yay instead of nay. I mean but nay. But it's a nay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Motion passes. I move that we adjourn. I second that. <laughs> okay, it's been moved by Jerry and seconded that we adjourn. Any discussion? I no, I want to say longer. Oh. No. <laughs> My yes, only question yes. is, do we need to do something specific to make the research on the hobby farm start happening? Right. Or is it just going to happen? Eric. Yeah. It, we will, it will happen. Okay. We don't we're, need to we're working on it right now request. with some of the, with some of the uh, information that we put together for this last one and our recommendations, so we'll keep moving on that as quickly as we can. And for that to actually take effect, I assume city council has to vote on an actual ordinance. Correct. I mean, generally we'd come back to you with a draft form of what we, we've come up with. I would also anticipate we would want to meet with um, some other entities like ISU Extension, Blackhawk County Health, and maybe just a full technical review committee to talk to them about what the proposed ordinance would say for number of animals, types of animals, and all that. Um, and then after we've done all that and come back to you and you've recommended moving to council, it would be up to council to approve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And <coughs> I 
I would echo to do it sooner than later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I just want to throw out, I think three cows is way too big. Mm -hmm. Cows, that's huge. Even if you have six kids, I mean, no. Well, well, yeah. She horses. wants chickens, she <laughs> wants goats, and I want chickens, so we need something down, you know, to <laughs> clarify. Yeah. I mean, everybody likes that game heydays. So you... okay. <laughs> Motion still on the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same side. Okay. We are adjourned.